I just want to encourage you this evening that, you know, as we're um, going through this uh, virus and social distancing, people are at home, um, they're away from other people, you know, it's a good time for us to get in touch with our Creator and our God. And so one way that He is found, hallelujah, is through His Word. And so His Word is ever revealing and so I've, I've uh, read his word, uh, certain scriptures before, and then I'll read it again, and God will uh, point out something, he'll uh, manifest something in his word, and I'm like, I look at his word, uh, and I'm like, oh, wow, I, I never saw that before. And so that's God's word. Um, God, uh, you know, he wants to do something new in our hearts, he wants to do something new in our lives. And so that's why his word is ever revealing to us. And so uh, with that said, um, I just I remember when I first got saved. And so I would go around and tell all of my friends about Jesus. I was talking to uh, one of my friend's wife. Her, na her name is uh, Tesla. And so I was telling her all that God was doing in my life. How he was delivering me, how he was setting me free. And so every time I would see my friends, I could not stop talking about Jesus and the God that I served. I would talk so much about Jesus that one day she told me something remarkably interesting. She told me that I cannot be so spiritual because uh, she told me that I was uh, too much in the heavenly realms, that I was too much in the clouds, basically, and that I needed to come back to earth. That I needed to experience the good things in this life. And so I kind of knew what she was talking about because she was a pothead. <laughs> so how she was experiencing life and that was what she was basically telling me. That I needed to come back to the earth and experience what she was experiencing. But how many of us know that I got delivered from that life? I got delivered from drinking. So I eventually... Stop witnessing to those people because I, I couldn't hang out with them no more. And I knew that they weren't going to hear it. And But that was, amen, my zeal for God. I wanted to get closer to God. And so this woman, she didn't understand this. I was hungry for God and the word of God. And so as a people of God, we always need to be hungry for his word. Amen. Let's read our scripture. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into the house. And as she was had a and she had a sister who was called Mary, who sat at Jesus feet and heard his word. Martha was a distracted with much serving and she approached him and said, Lord, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left? Me to serve alone, therefore tell her to help me. And Jesus answered her and said, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing in, is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Let's pray this evening. God, we pray, Lord God, that we would hunger, Lord God, for your word, Lord God, for it is righteous, it is holy, Lord God. It is to fear, feed our souls, Lord God. It is to feed our hearts, Lord God, and our spirits, Lord God. We thank you for the power of your word. Let us not grow dull, Lord God, in your word, Lord God, that we would, um, Lord God, hunger and thirst for it. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I just want to look at this evening. That which you give affection will become your focus. And so I believe there's a lot of people in the house of God like Martha. We serve, we serve, we serve, and we forget our intimacy with God. Serving outweighs our relationship with God. We just think that serving is all that we need in our life. We have lost our int intimacy with God. This man said, years ago, my wife was deployed in the military for months. She would send me letters. This is uh, pre-internet days. When I'd receive them, I would read them quickly. And then I would sit back and think, 
then I would read through and examine the patterns. Why she would write so neatly here or more in a hurry there? What was going on? Why are their hearts on these exclamation points, but not on these? Then I would read it slowly. I would walk around and think about it. Why did she do this? Because I, Why did I do this? Because I love my wife. So suppose it was different, though. Suppose I got a letter and I just tossed it over the pile or where the, all the other mail was. And there it sat with the junk mail and the bills for a few days. I'd walk across the room and see it, but instead of opening it, I would just ignore it as I watched Sports Center or read the paper. You would doubtlessly, I mean, you, you would uh, doubtless call me a bad husband and say that our relationship was in trouble. And you would call me, amen, and you would be right. But isn't that what people do with the Bible? God has spoken to us in his word. It is his letter to us. How can any person say they truly love God but throw his letter aside in favor of other stuff? How can they give his amen, letter less attention to, than to other things like it doesn't matter? And so we cannot separate a love for the word of God. Amen. We cannot separate a love for the word of God and the God of the word. These two are together. Amen. Because how many of us know that he is his word? Amen. And so let's take a look at our family this evening. And so I remember before I started dating and before I got married, amen, and before the kids came, that it was easier to uh, give my time and devotion to God. So it became hard to try to balance my relationship with God and my family. I can recall before marriage and the kids, I would read my Bible, I would pray, I would fast, and it was like nothing. So the scripture Amen. That I'm about to read became very true to me when I got married. And so this is why Paul is writing. Because of the present crisis, I think it is best to, re to remain as you are. If you have a wife, do not seek then to marry. If you do not have a wife, do not seek. Sorry. If you have a wife, do not seek to end the marriage. If you do not have a wife, do not seek to get married, but if you do get married, it is not a sin. If a young woman gets married, it is not a sin. So, it's not a sin. Amen. If you want to get married, or if you get married. However, those who get married at this time will have troubles. How many can say amen to that? We will have troubles. And I am trying to spare you those tr problems but let me say this, dear brothers and sisters, the time that remains is very short. So from now on, those with wives should not focus only on their marriage. Listen to this. He says, do not focus only on, their, on your marriage. Those who weep or who uh, rejoice or who buy things should not be absorbed by their weeping nor their joy or their possession. Those who use these things of the world should not become attached to them, for this world, as we know, will soon pass away. But a married man has to think about his earthly responsibilities and how to please his wife. His interests are divided. In the same way, a woman who is no longer married or has never been married can be devoted to the Lord and holy in body and in spirit, but a married woman has to think about her earthly responsibilities and how to please her husband. I am saying this for your benefit, not to place restrictions on you. I want you to do whatever will help you serve the Lord best with these few, distract with few distractions as possible. 
And so this is Paul, he's talking to the Corinthians, amen, and he's telling them that it's, you know, that, that sometimes, amen, our interest is, can be divided between God and our, our families. And so one can take a residence over the other. And so he's telling them, you know, th this is not bad, you know, for you to be married or, you know, for us to have children. But how many of us know that sometimes we've got to be able to balance things? And so this is what Paul is telling them. He, he's adverting them that, you know, that, that, that if they do get married, that they should be a balanced people. And so I want to I want to take a look at that, you know, that we as a people of God or we can make excuses because this w this could be one of our excuse that, you know, uh, our families can be our excuse. And I, I know it's 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 been a, a real thing in my life because it's it's a thing that I have to balance. And so we can all make excuses. But the real reason why um, we do not give ourselves to the word of God is that uh, we are uh, undisciplined people. In order to do anything of value consistently, it takes discipline. However, we sit back and do not live with intentionality. We will not be regularly in the word of God. And so think about the Olympic athletes. When they're, when they're training, they just don't hit the snooze button on the alarm. Never. Do they get tired? Of course they do. But it is critical, amen, for them to discipline their lives. Amen. It is when the mind speaks to the heart and says, I am in charge. It is time to get up, even if I don't feel like it. Discipline takes effort. We do not decline into discipline. We must work at it. Is there anything more important than godliness to discipline ourselves for? And this is one thing that, um, amen, in 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5, it says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who is the judge, the living and the dead, and by this, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word of God, be ready in season and out of season, uh, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching, for the time is coming when people would not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers who to suit their own passions. And so what the writer here is saying to Timothy, he's saying that, that you have to discipline yourself, Timothy. That there's going to be times where there's going to be good seasons and bad seasons. How many of us know that, you know, when, when everything is flowing good in our lives, when everything is go, going good for us, it's, it's easier for us to serve God. And so he's telling them that there's, there's going to be bad seasons in your life. And that, um, you know, you need to you need to be a well-seasoned man, Timothy. And it goes on to say, and I will turn away from and they will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myth. As for you, always be sober minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. And how many of us know that this takes discipline for you and I to do to keep continuing for the kingdom of God? To keep going forward, amen, takes a disciplined life, takes, takes an every day. Uh, there's sometimes that, that I don't want to go to work and, and I'm there in bed and I'm like, oh, it's Monday or it's Friday. I'm thinking about calling in sick and I think to myself and then I, I start thinking about the paycheck and I'm like, oh, okay, that's motivation for me. And so I go ahead and get up. And uh, so, but... Amen. We need to have the same heart for the kingdom of God. Amen. That that we would say, oh, well, this morning, you know, I don't feel like getting up to pray, but I'm going to get up and pray. It's very seldom in the morning that I, I don't get up and pray. Very seldom, unless I've had uh, one of those all night fellowships and 
It's like I'm I'm like plastered to the pillow. Um, that's have that's happened, amen. Before, but I usually get up and I'll, I'll pray because I know I need it. And so, when we have an unbalance, amen, in our lives, we become dysfunctional. And so, our f- let me tell you that your flesh, my flesh, it needs no help. The flesh is the flesh. Give it a little time. Give it a little. Um, amen, unattention, and your flesh will just take over. It's your nature. But neglect the spirit and the soul, and you will have problems. So the spirit needs attention because you and I were spiritual beings. We're on a constant, amen, we're constantly getting hit by the enemy. We're constantly getting hit by this life. We're constantly getting hit at work. Um, sometimes in our in our in our families, we're constantly getting hit. And uh, one man that comes to mind this evening that that was a man who gave himself to the flesh was Samson. He gave himself to his desires, and so this man's desires got the best of him. Judges fourteen one through three says, and Samson went down at Timotha. And he saw one of the daughters of the Philistines. Then he came up and told his father and mother, I saw one of the daughters of the Philistines at Timotha. Now get her for me as my wife. But his father and mother said to him, Is there not a woman among the daughters of your relatives or among all our people that you must go down and take a wife? Of the uncircumcised Philistines. But Samson said to his father. Get her for me. For she is right in my eyes. And so. I guess he was right in his eyes. He was pleasing. And that's all he was thinking about. Because Samson was. was He was a Nazarite. He was. He was separated for God. And he was not just a Nazarite. But he was one of the judges. That delivered God's people. And so he had to be, amen, his heart and his lifestyle, amen, his relationship with God, amen, he had to tend to that. But we see the story of Samson, he he, uh, eats, amen, right after this, he eats honey from, from a dead carcass. And so this was unclean to the people, amen, especially him being a Nazarite, he ate of the unclean. Amen. But before it started with looking at this Philistine woman. And then from there he went on to to sleeping with a prostitute. Think about this. And so we must find a balance between our desire and God's desires. And so when we don't have a proper relationship with God, deception creeps into our lives. And so God has to judge our flesh. And if you don't judge it, let me tell you that God's going to judge it for you. God sent the prophet many times to speak to the children of Israel. Directly to them. But Israel would not, amen, listen to God. They would demand that the, the prophets would not prophesy anymore. Israel's own desire became stronger than the desire for God. Now they had what they wanted, but it was silence more terrible than the roar of thunder. God became distant from them. The time of God speaking was over and time for judgment had come so many times upon them. And so many times God would deliver his people. Amen. God would lead them. But then they would disobey him and he would lead them back to captivity. God wanted a relationship with them. And when they didn't have a relationship with God, they would do evil. And think about Samson. It it started with something simple. It started with a simple desire. And as his desire grew more and more, he, 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 uh, he, he gave himself to other things. 
And I want to say this evening that a lot of times it's, it starts with, with a little thing, with a disconnection from God. And then we're, we're led away to other things because we got to weigh out our desires. Matthew 23, uh, 37 through 30, 39 says, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messenger, how often I wanted to gather you as children together as um, a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. And look now, your house is abandoned and desolate. For I'll tell you this, you will never see me again until you say blessing on the one who comes in, my, in the Lord's name. And so this, this is God, amen, abandoning them, um, his, his own people. And so he says here that he will, he, he's not going to reveal himself to them. He's not going to come back to them or deliver, it, deliver them. Unless they say blessing on the one who comes in my name. And that's his prophet, his prophets that would come to them, amen, and, and basically reveal their hearts to them. Until, until um, they said that in their lives and in their hearts and in their actions, then, then God wasn't, he was not going to heal them, hear them, amen. I want to take a look at the one thing is needed. And so in our scripture that we read, amen, Mary, amen, and, sh and, she had s and she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. And so what Mary had, amen, she kept, and that was her relationship with Jesus. And so I want to I want to say this evening that if we have a right, right relationship with Jesus, everything else flows out of that relationship. So our witness flows out of that. Amen. Our livelihood flows out of that. Everything that we do, amen, flows out of that. And so when we have a right relationship with God, Martha, in our scripture, in our beginning scripture, was, was upset. And Mary's life, amen, she was used to having a relationship with, with Jesus, with God. And so everything that, that flowed out of Mary's life was, was pleasing. She was more delightful. We see, amen, the contrast between Mary and Martha. Uh, Martha is getting upset at the little things in life. Amen. I know Jesus is at her at their house, but Jesus wants a relationship. Amen. With both of them, and one of them got it right, and the other one didn't, because that was the more more important thing. And so, this evening. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. I've promised it once, and I'll promise it again. I will obey your righteous regulations. I have suffered much, O Lord. Restore my life as you have promised, Lord. Accept my offering of praise and teach me your regulations. My life constantly hangs in the balance, but I will not stop obeying your instruction. And so this is why we need a relationship with God, because our lives, think about it, they do hang in the balance. It's a fight between God, amen, and, and Satan. So our, heart, our lives, they do hang in the balance each and every day. So we need that relationship with God. We need guidance. We need clarity. We need... Um, you know, God's uh, voice to see what direction that you and I should go in. Because how many of us know that we can go in the wrong direction? We can turn down the wrong path if, if we don't get a hold of God. And no doubt these, these are the, the, the uh, words of David. Psalms 119.21 says, You rebuke the arrogant, those who wander from your commands are cursed. Don't let them scorn and insult me, for 
For I have obeyed your laws. Amen. He goes on to say, Even princes sit and speak against me, but I will meditate on your decrees. Your laws please me. They give me wise, wise advice. Amen. And so this is no doubt, you know, um, in the in David in this in this time in his life he he's he's in a bad spot, but he knows, Amen. His connection with God, Amen, needs to be, Amen, like this. He needs to he he needs to be, Amen, one with God, and so we see the story of David. You know, he later becomes king. After all this, after a bunch of adversity in his life, amen, and that's what, what God wants to do. He wants to help you and I that one day, amen, we can, we can make heaven our home because there, there's so many distractions. We can go to the left or we can go to the right, amen, and so this evening, let's focus on a relationship with God. Can I have every head bowed and every eye closed?